This is a cube rotating through four dimensional space and I built this entirely in Desmos. Just 31 equations and 18 functions is enough to show us a window into the universe of four dimensions. Let's say we have a 2D person living in a 2D world and we want to show them what this 3D cube looks like. But they can't see this 3D cube because they exist in a 2D slice of our 3D world. So how about we put this 3D cube into their 2D world and then rotate the cube around so they can see all around the cube. But they'd still never actually see the full cube, they would only ever see a cross section. And likewise, we can never actually see a 4D cube, we can only ever see the cross section. This is the cross section of a hypercube, and it looks just like a small cube inside of a big cube. That's because a normal cube has edges that run parallel to the three axes. So when a fourth dimension or a fourth axis is added, then there needs to be some new edges that run parallel to this fourth axis. And that's why these diagonal edges connect the smaller cube to the bigger cube. You'll notice that if we move the cube through the fourth dimension, it looks as if the length of these diagonal edges is changing. This is because just like in a 3D world, when we move further away from an object, the object gets smaller. And in the same way, when we move further away in the fourth dimension, the fourth dimensional edges get smaller. And if we stop rotating the cube in the third dimension and instead rotate it in the fourth dimension, then it looks as if the cube is shape shifting and that the smaller cube keeps swapping with the bigger cube. So to build a 4D engine in Desmos to display this hypercube, we first need to find the cross section of the cube and then display it as a 3D shape. Then we need to project that 3D shape onto a 2D graph so we can plot it on a graphing calculator. It's actually pretty easy to make a 3D engine in Desmos. And if you wanna know how it's done, then check out the video I already made on the subject where I explain how 3D engines actually work. First of all, let's add a W component to our camera object to give it a fourth axis. Now I'm not going to worry about rotating the camera in the fourth dimension because this is essentially the same thing as just rotating the object in the fourth dimension. So let's add a fourth rotation of the object which we'll call P subscript D. A cuboid can simply be defined as a pair of two opposite points in 3D since any other point on the cuboid can be found by taking x, y, and z components from the opposite points. So we can use an array of six elements where each element represents an x, y, or z component of the opposite points to represent our cuboid in 3D. And just like how we can use an array in 3D, we can also use an array in 4D to represent our points using x, y, z, and w components. So we can simply copy this array into an equation on Desmos to get a 4D cuboid. Let's say we have a point and a camera in 4D, and we want to find the vector between the camera and that point. The vector is represented by x, y, z, w minus c, but let's say we want to represent this parametrically, where a point on this line is equal to x, c, y, c, ZC and WC. We can say that WC is equal to C plus T lots of W minus C. Now because we want a three-dimensional cross-section of a four-dimensional shape, we're going to say that WC is equal to zero because when WC equals zero, then this shows us a three-dimensional cross-section of our four-dimensional point. So it's a 3D image of our 4D point. So when C, WC equals zero, zero equals C plus T, lots of W minus T. And then if we rearrange this, we get T equals C over C minus W. Now that we know what T is, we can find the X component of our 3D image for our 3D point, which is equal to zero from this camera here, plus T lots of X, which is equal to C x over c minus w. Now likewise, yc is equal to cy over c minus w, and zc is equal to cz over c minus w. And this is our image of our 4D cube or 4D point. Now when we copy that into Desmos and map it to each point in the cuboid, we get this which looks very similar to our hypercube. Now, if we copy that into Desmos and then map that to our cuboid in 4D, we get this. And if you draw polygons to connect the vertices, then you get a hypercube. Now we can rotate this in three dimensions, but when we try to rotate this in the fourth dimension, 
nothing happens because we haven't actually created a fourth dimension rotation yet. There are actually six ways to rotate a polygon in 4D, but they all pretty much do the same thing. So today we're going to rotate in the XW plane. So let's rotate each of these points in 4D by angle theta. And to do that, we're going to use a 4D rotation matrix. This is the matrix you have to use in order to rotate something in 4D. So you simply multiply the rows by the columns and you get this. And we can just convert that into an array and put it into Desmos. Copy that into Desmos and then apply this inside the project 4D to 3D and we have a hypercube. But as soon as we rotate by the fourth dimension, you'll notice um, it kind of just looks like a weird 3D hypercube. And if you rotate by B and D simultaneously, then you can get it to do some pretty cool things. Uh, we can also rotate by the other two and make it look even more weird and wacky. Thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. Click this video if you want to see more and don't forget to piss right off.